Well, good morning. Uh, it's this. It's the time in our service when believers get to celebrate together the Lord's table. It is during this time that we personalize our worship of Jesus and use this time to honor Him through remembering His work on the cross for our benefit. The passage we'll look at this morning is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 24. So again, if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand. There are some men up front that will be coming down the aisle, and they'd be happy to give one to you to use. And if you don't own a Bible, please take this one with you as a, as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So let's pray. Father, we again come together and we want to remember the work that Jesus did for us on the cross, that he would suffer and that he would be obedient and joyful in going to the cross and he would die for sinners like us. But he was resurrected and he conquered sin and death. And it is our belief in him and our faith in him that we can do the same. So we praise you. We thank you for this time, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. So as you may know, uh, the book of First Peter is written uh, to believers who are scattered throughout a hostile world. And because of their belief in Christ, they are suffering persecution and insults. So Peter writes this epistle to encourage them. So let's read together 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 24. For what credit is there if, when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if, when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds we are healed. So look at verse 24 again. This is the central theme of the gospel. He bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds we are healed. The substitutionary atoning death of Christ is how our sins were imputed to him. And in return, by faith in him, his righteousness is imputed to us. Believers acknowledge Christ as the Son of God, as their Savior, their Redeemer, and their High Priest. He was the sacrificial Lamb who died for us, for our sins. And his death and resurrection provided our rescue from the domain of darkness and transferred us into his beloved kingdom. The sacrificial death of Christ satisfied divine judgment and provided eternal salvation to all would believe who would believe in his name. So let's look back at uh, verse 21. For I have been called for this purpose. What purpose? to suffer patiently for doing right, as stated in verse 20. And how are we to suffer? We patiently endure it, which Peter says, we'll find favor with God. Believer, we have been called to respond well to suffering, and God will provide a way. Verse 21 goes on, Since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. You and I have the privilege of suffering well for him since he suffered for us. 
The word example is from the Greek word hypogrammon, and I love this. The word literally means a method used by children to trace over the letters over and over again of the alphabet to learn how to write them correctly. We are to follow in his steps. We are to endure suffering as he did in every pain and insult or unjust action against us because our love and allegiance of our love and allegiance to him. We are called to suffer for Christ with endurance and patience, which finds favor with God. Who else would we look to but Christ as our example? In his dying, he gave us a pattern for living in a hostile world. He is our sinless example of how to face injustice, rejection, and persecution. Verse 22 says, Jesus committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. Peter is using an excerpt from Isaiah 53 to elaborate on Jesus' exemplary suffering. His selection of Isaiah 53 is appropriate since the focus in Isaiah 52 verse 13 through chapter 53 verse 12 is on suffering of the servant of the Lord. Because Christ was sinless, all his suffering was unjust and undeserved. He was reviled, scorned, blasphemed, mocked, and beaten. And in all that, he was an example for us to handle suffering because he endured it obediently and joyfully as our sinless Savior. He, had no, he did not doubt God. He did not debate with God. Nothing came out of Jesus' mouth that was unholy or unrighteous. Christ is our example. So remember that when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake, look to Jesus. Peter goes on in verse 23 to, de to describe Jesus' unjust and undeserved suffering. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. And while suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. The word reviled means abuse. Jesus was abused. And yet not once did he seek to retaliate. Jesus' silence in suffering is exemplary. It is exemplary evidence of his non-retaliatory spirit. I think we can all agree that the urge for revenge is almost overbearing. It's almost unbearable when we get mistreated. But with the help of Christ, we have the power to resist that temptation. Now we come to the positive ending of verse 23. How was it that Jesus was able to patiently endure all these afflictions in his suffering? Verse 23b says, He kept entrusting himself to him who judged, judges righteously. Jesus loved his Father. He knew his Father was his protector and deliverer, and that he would be the strength, give him the strength to endure. In his unjust treatment, Jesus shows us the example of one who never threatened, but instead committed himself to his Father. Hebrews 12.3 says, For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Consider Jesus. If you're listening to this message today and Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, we would love for you to reach out to either me or one of the elders after the service. We would love to tell you about the awesome love and the forgiveness that could be yours. Don't be afraid to ask. There would be someone up front also over here to my right who would be happy to answer any questions that you might have and to pray with you. As the men bring the elements down, please know that the Lord's table is for believers only.
And if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, please allow the bread and the cracker, or the bread and the uh, juice to pass you by. Believers, as you receive the bread and the juice, please use this time to reflect on Jesus' work on the cross and acknowledge any unconfessed sin. Men, please come in service. You may take communion on your own when you're ready, and I'll be back in a few minutes to close this time in prayer.